if everything goes to plan, I will hopefully have the game by the time you're watching this, because I've got a lot of backlog to upload before then. And so, another week goes by. And next Wednesday seems to be a public holiday. We just get one thing from Tanaka now. <laughs> Immediately, we can check the show again. Oh, well, I wonder how much Tanaka... Okay, we've got a plot event, though. Yes, who is it? It's me. Oh. You don't stop by very often, senpai. Is something wrong? No. I just wanted to talk. Ah, are you feeling won't we? Hey, are you teasing me? No. Well, maybe just a little. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what this Nyx is like. Hey, do you think it's inside Tartarus? I have no idea. Oh, by the way, I've made my decision. I want to fight to the end. It's better than doing nothing. That's why you're here, isn't it, Senpai? To talk about our decision? I... I guess it is. <laughs> you're so easy to read. I've made my decision as well. Kirijo is making great strides to turn itself around. After I graduate, I plan to assume leadership of the group, and continue where my father left off. I cannot turn back now, even if I wanted to. But what if you die? If I die defeating Nyx, then the Kirijo group will have to continue on without me. But I am confident they would fulfill my wishes. Ryoji said Nyx can't be defeated, but I kind of wonder about that. I don't think our special member can be killed, either. I agree. Death dwelled within him, amplifying his abilities. Though he was exceptional to begin with. He's an interesting guy, huh? Yes, he is. You know, if things don't work out, I think I'll still be okay as long as I'm with everyone. Honestly, it doesn't matter whether or not we die. All that matters is that we're proud of how we lived. And I'd be proud if we decided to fight Nyx. Does your decision have anything to do with your father? Hmm, a little. But it's more about me and how I feel. I understand. Senpai, when we were in Kyoto, you asked me to stand by your side. Do you remember? Yes, I remember. We will fight together, Yukari. Together. Okay, that was actually pretty awesome. I had forgotten about that scene. But what I was saying was I wonder how much Tanaka manages to extort out of people at Christmas time. <laughs> but yeah, some of those lines Yukari said, they pretty much sum up the central theme of this game in a way. All that matters is that we're proud of how we lived. Tanaka, do you know something about what's going on? You're selling a sword called Apocalypse. Oh, never mind. Wow, that's expensive. Ah, uh, as curious as I am to see what that does, I think we'll probably be able to just randomly get one in Tartarus anyway. So, I don't know. And uh, speaking of curious, I actually want to check what the mine supplement is. Please let it be an SP recovery item. Doesn't even tell you what it does. I'll have to try it when we're next in Tartarus. I normally don't try the items from his show because I get the feeling they're kind of similar to... Uh, what was it? The... Like the old morsel and rancid gravy? Oh, this time it's the guys here. Well, the girls have already made, it, made up their minds.
things coming up. 11 more days. Well, that's one thing we can all agree on. They need to pay. That day can only come sooner. Anyone else here? Oh, oh, hey, Fuka. Huh. It's kind of funny that she's got that tree there because uh, of the Christmas star that we got from her earlier in the game. Oh, this, this is the great line. This is it. This is the one that I've been waiting for. <laughs> this, I have been waiting for this. <laughs> Yeah, um, I admittedly got spoiled in this line for my first playthrough from the TV Tropes Funny page on this ser on this game, but this is just so good. <laughs> this, this is one of the legendary dialogue options of this series. Just, just, let's just bask in the glory of this dialogue option for a moment. <laughs> it's just so good. Anyway, um, I guess that... Admittedly, though, in Japan, the third option is kind of true, because Christmas isn't exactly, uh, doesn't really have its... They've pretty much borrowed just the commercial aspects of it. It's not a public holiday there, and it doesn't really have any religious connotations over there. It's just, once again, like I said, they borrowed the commercial aspects of it. But now, Phoenix Ranger Feather Man R, episode 44, Demon Robot ta ta oh, Tanika. Demon Robot Tanika, Danger Featherman R, that's a pretty straightforward episode. And that's pretty much it. So, this Sunday we'll be doing exactly what we did last Sunday. I'm pretty sure, yes, yes, we are doing exactly what we did last Sunday. However, tomorrow is going to be very, very... I guess important, yeah. But tomorrow something special is going to happen, let's just say. So it's time to just do another one of these fortunes. I've probably, well, I mean, I've definitely explained the fortunes earlier, but uh, if you're not on a Max Socialinks run and aren't following the guide, the relationship fortune will not work if you have a reverse relationship with someone that you're dating. So yes, we need a second one for Yukari. Oh. And... alright. <laughs> yeah, you can lose money as well. I think if you get worse luck, you get tired. It's listed as one of the ways you can potentially get tired on the guide. Which is significant because at the beginning of the game we actually need to get tired. Something that I was going to say earlier, although I'm not sure if I'll get the chance because there's just a few party member conversations here. Yes, it was in front of you. It was right on the main menu, which we're not touching that yet. Seriously, don't even touch the answer yet if you're playing this game and haven't beaten it yet. Don't. Seriously, don't. Yes. For as a certain someone once said, if we die this day, we die with glory, we die hero's deaths, but we shall not die. <laughs> said someone proceeded to die horribly right after making that quote. But anyway. I, I like how Yukari's the main one who's actually wanting to fight here. <laughs> it's kind of not something that a lot of kids his age would be like. I don't know, I still enjoy Christmas time at my age. It doesn't quite have the, I mean, when, when I was younger, I'd always wake up really, really early in the morning. But now, not so much, but I still get to, usually we have family gatherings. And uh, I suppose... I'm just going to go out to the arcade for stat boost again, because I want to talk about something. So... I was thinking at the moment where I was like, oh yeah, I don't want to remember how bad the early game in this run was, all that uh, hoop jumping to max courage and that, that really tight money grinding and all of that budgeting. Thing is though, I actually, having started a Persona 4 max social links run recently, oh wow, this is cool, this is the first time we're seeing this, this is actually pretty awesome. 
So yeah, the mall actually does get Christmas decorations, which is pretty cool. Sadly, there are all these apathy syndrome people around here, which is a shame. Huh. Maybe that's someone that we can investigate for potential ties to the whole fall thing. Huh. It's like she is actually figuring something out. I wonder if the fortune telling girl has anything new to say. But anyway, like I was saying, started a Persona 4 Max Social Room recently, and the early game of that is absolutely painful, but for a totally different reason. Ah, uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, same thing, same thing. So, the actual social linking is a lot easier. You don't have to worry about links reversing or anything like that. The scheduling is easier because you have a huge amount of time at the end of the game that's totally free. The issue is, though, the dungeons. Because dungeons take up social link time in both that game and in Persona 5, really not looking forward to doing playthroughs of those two for max social links because at the very beginning of the game, I suppose we can just boost Thor's strength now that that one boss that got broken by that is over. Because dungeons are done during the daytime and it kills your social link time for that day, you have very, very little time to explore the dungeons in a max social links run of Persona 4 or 5, at least early in the game. So, the, the guides I've seen for both of those games expect you to clear the early game dungeons in one day each, which, if you've tried that, is complete and utter hell. Yukiko's Castle trying to do that in one day, that and the boss, which requires you to... Oh, just... And you don't have access to the fox then, so no SP recovery either. I only found out afterwards that you could buy drinks to restore your SP... Kind of wish I knew that, but the thing is, and then Persona 5, they expect you to complete the first dungeon of that in one day as well, and the dungeons in P5 are not designed to be done in one sitting. They're huge, they're fixed rather than randomly generated, you, can, you find maps in them, just like a lot of other RPGs. Oh, it's just the exam results, I thought it was plot events. And there are multiple save points and warp points across the entire dungeon. You're expected to come back to them over several days. And because they expect you to beat the early dungeons in a single day each, they recommend playing on safety mode if you want to do a max social links run, which just annoys me because I don't like playing on safety mode. In fact, I was considering... So yeah, Mitsuru's got to, probably got to give for us. I was actually considering playing Persona 5 on hard mode for my first playthrough, but uh, that's probably out the window. It's just, it's annoying, because it, it's, it's, it's a downside of social link time being taken up at the same slot as dungeon time in Persona 4 and 5, meaning that... If you want to do a max social links run, you basically have to sacrifice... It's like... The two main aspects of the series, dungeon crawling and the social simulator. You kind of have to sacrifice one in order to do the other, and it's just annoying. Anyway, sorry for that rant, but anyway. Hmm. Oh yeah, she's from Orkami, isn't she? Oh yeah, and if you're wondering where that class on Myorji comes from uh, in Fire Emblem Fates, yes, it's from on Myordor. And yep, he's mentioning the name directly now. Oh, I haven't really heard about them. Yes, even in the Age of Samurai, that uh, magic played their part, because uh, several retainers of the Samurai were on Myorji. Okay, let's hope that I'll be, um... <laughs> Good with this. What sorcerer was Himiko? Oh, that was easy, Kido. I 
think those... I, I know that's kind of that's kind of a spirit type thing. Are those the... I don't know if those are the things in the forest in um, Princess Mononoke. here. Oh yeah, obviously. They they were like completely, let's just get rid of everything traditional. Though ironically, they reinstated Shinto. In fact, they were the ones that called it Shinto. It was actually not called that originally. I'm going to stop there, though, because today today is something very important. Today, we are actually finally maxing out Yukari Social Link. Hopefully, if I've done anything, everything right. But yes, we will be doing that now. Please let me have done everything right. So, we have Pixie. Ooh. Yep, I did everything right. Time for rank 10. And well, we have kind of seen this room recently. But it's the first time that Gary Stu has. Um, what is that implying? This option is so in character for Gary Sue, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. But he did. Oh, right, it's just a cell phone strap. Okay, then. Oh, okay. It's kind of relevant to what's happening now, actually. Oh, it's from my dad, too. And, okay, I know it kind of ruins it with the name that I gave the main character here, but Yukari is the only romance social link to say this. And with that... We have finally maxed this social link. The love of social link is at its maximum level. You can now create the Earth Mother, Sibeli. Sibeli is a mother and earth goddess from Phrygia. The only known goddess from that city and is generally thought to be that city's patron deity. Phrygia existed in Asia Minor in an area that now makes up the majority of Turkey. Very little records have survived of her original worship or original myths from the region, but she was later imported into both the Greek and Roman pantheons. In Greece, parts of her myths may have been assimilated into their earth goddess Gaia, but Sibylle still had a cult following. She was depicted mostly as a foreign and exotic goddess, who arrives in a lion-drawn chariot, accompanied by wild music and wine. She was primarily associated with lions, but also with city walls, mountains, towns, and fertile nature. In Rome, she was known as the Magna Mater, or Great Mother, and they adopted her during the Second Punic War. After they were losing badly, and an oracle told them that if they adopted the Great Mother, they might be able to beat Carthage, they did so, and they actually did beat Carthage. Sibylle got adopted in Rome as a Trojan goddess and tied in with their myth of being descended from the Trojans. 
She also had a mystery cult surrounding her that got involved with various controversial practices that I'll actually talk more about once we get to a different Ultimate Persona that is very strongly linked to Sibylle. Let's just say there were some pretty bizarre initiation rituals involved, and the initiations were often so expensive that most people who were in the cult were rich people. I'm actually not entirely sure why Sibylle is in the Lover's Arcana. In a lot of ways, her myths more represent the Empress, although it could perhaps be a reference to how Rome chose to adopt her following a prophecy, and this choice led to good things for them, I guess? Might also be a reference to her cults being accused of being somewhat hedonistic. But let's get to the gameplay. Sibylle is actually a pretty good persona. She learns a lot of great healing spells, like most personas of the Lover's Arcana, and that being her inheritance type, she can easily learn more. Starting with a full revival spell is pretty great, and combined with the fact that she's almost guaranteed to inherit Medea Rahan, and that Auto Maraku to automatically boost the entire party's defense, it makes her a pretty great persona for healing duty. She also learns the ever useful Spellmaster skill. Halving the SP cost of all magic is amazing, and any persona that gets this skill should definitely be highly considered. She also learns Megadola for pretty good almighty damage, but also Myriad Arrows, which is a pretty decent physical attack, hits multiple times and does quite a lot of pierce damage. In some ways, you might think that she's kind of like Skahar in that her skill set is a little all over the place. I personally find that she works a lot better than Skahar did, which might be because the skills that she does learn naturally are often very good complements to the kind of skills that you can get onto her via fusion. Oh, and Bowmaster is also there, I guess. Like all of the Weapon Master skills, this is an exclusive one to Sibylle. So if you really like bows, it might be worth a skill slot, but the vast majority of players I've seen tend to replace this one pretty quickly. One major advantage to Sibylle is that she has no weaknesses, and this actually does really help in certain things she can do. One thing that I've seen be quite popular among players of this game is to fuse Thunder Rain onto Sibylle. Sibylle, like Odin, gets the Spellmaster skill, which helps make it cheap to use, has easy access to a lot of other magic boosting abilities like Mind Charge, has a great magic stat, and unlike Odin, she has no weaknesses. A lot of people find her a more effective persona at using Thunder Rain than Odin simply for that alone. Her high magic combined with that Spellmaster ability makes inheriting any kind of magic very useful for her. Sibylle is quite customizable in a lot of ways. You can make her either mostly a healer with a bit of offense, or you can make her more of a magical nuke with the right setup. Definitely a great persona to use if you have access to her. Yeah, well, I guess it makes sense for her to be saying that. She's the one who wants to fight against this. She's the one who has the most hope for the future. Okay. <laughs> Gary Stu scores again. How many is that now? But yeah, out of out of most of the romance social links, I really like that rank 10. That is one of my favorite rank 10s out of all of them. Oh, hey. Oh. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um I guess she's trying to act coy and cover up the fact that that just happened. Anyway. It's the 10 days. Well, I mean, you might there's a you're probably not feeling scared at all because you just had a reason to be very happy then. Although, I probably shouldn't tell you that, uh, that he's going to be cheating on you a lot. And actually, it's a pretty good moment story-wise to max her link now that I think about it. Okay, everyone's still saying the same stuff there. So, there's actually a really, really tragic thing about all of this, which I'll get to once I check if you've got anything new to say. Uh, yeah, you're still saying the same stuff. Oh, nice. Sure am, for one very specific reason.
Yeah, pretty much, I guess. Though, then again, a test score is even relevant for someone who's more into boxing. So, here's the kind of tragic thing about that. After having just professed a love to you, Kari and Max for social link, we have a walk at night with Mitsuru now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's actually... <laughs> I'm so sorry, Yukari. We said we wouldn't make any plans for tonight. That <laughs> also ended up being a lie. Gary Stu, you continue to be a jerk. Well, I mean, obviously he is. This used to be his home. Yeah. Oh. Oh! Well, that just got even more painful. <laughs> this is... yeah. The whole story of Max Oceanlink's run, it just must be so painful being the female members of the team at this point. And yeah, because of Walking Koromaru, we weren't able to go to Tartarus. I think I'm going to actually try and go to Tartarus tonight. It seems kind of weird, but... Going on Christmas Eve just... I don't know, it, it just feels a little bit uh, a little bit wrong. And... Yeah, last night we had the Koromaru walk. So another experience with Miss Ep... <laughs> <laughs> Near death experiences. Yeah, that's a great thing to hear about in class. <laughs> There's no real way. Oh, yeah. You know, I get the feeling. Yeah, you know. You know exactly what we're going through at this point. Yeah, I've heard about that happening. Um. Oh, yeah, well, that's totally relevant to this, because, yeah, it's the basis of this whole series. actually is relevant to what's happening now. Yeah, he totally knows. Oh, um, he he really knows. Wow, yeah. Seriously, so much of what he says is just so relevant to what's going on now. Oh, that one's obvious. I remember that one pretty easily, yeah. Utopia Yugoslavia, wow. <laughs> well, Utopia is another term that doesn't actually mean what most people think it means. I mean, I suppose the idea of a near-death experience awakening cognitive powers is kind of what evokers are doing. Oh, we haven't had a lunchtime scene for a while. Nine days. It is getting much, much closer. That's also why I want to go into Tartarus. Because that deadline for getting the last old document is fast approaching. Well, we are free, because we are seeing Mitsuru today. Yes, once again... Nassing a social link gives us free reign to immediately cheat on them. Well, I mean, we're not technically cheating on them, because Mitsuru is not actually romance yet, but, uh... Eventually, eventually we will be cheating on them. 
hand, so it is time to do just that. Though I wonder if Mitsuru will give us those cards first. We'll see. And then, yeah, speaking of cheating, Gary Stu's first waifu, who has been neglected for the entire game. Which is kind of a shame, because, um, she's actually, she's, she's pretty good. I like her social link quite a bit. Although, yeah, she does tend to get jealous very, very easily. There's someone else that we won't be really talking to anymore. What are you saying? Uh, kind of. Okay, so we are getting the thing. So we get King Card Set. I'm pretty sure, yeah, he, which one you get is actually based on which exam it is. So this being the last exam, we get King. And once again, match the persona, so we're fine. So let's go! Definitely making some good progress with this link, but that's only because it's one of the only links that we have at this point. Oh, wow, we're back here. It's been a while since we were here. <laughs> well, I mean, you have already done that, I think. Yeah, so the film festival, I believe, was added in FES. I mean, I think... I, in fact, I remember reading that it was in the vanilla version you just didn't have time to do it on the max social link schedule. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure we know the, um, the exact um, choice here. Though I still can't believe that some rich people have actual cinemas in their houses. Um, maybe. Really? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it does suit you pretty well. Oh, okay, it's an independence thing. <laughs> well, that, uh, that theme gets really, um, much more dramatically used in Persona 5. Oh yeah, I forgot that it got damaged. Well, I'd suggest going for a ride sometime. Ooh. Um, he's... Well, I mean, he's perfect in every way. Of course he can ride a motorcycle. But yeah, still nothing romantic just yet. But yeah, Empress is already halfway through. And the more than dreaming is still in the background. Weird thing is that, that that name and poster actually remind me of La La Land now. Yeah, becoming more intimate, but it's not quite there yet. And so tonight I hope we can go to Tartarus tonight, because that's what I kind of want to do. It's been a little while since we've been able to go, thanks to exams. Oh, Koromaru's greeting this time, that's cool. Anything on TV? And of course. Oh, hey, it's that place. Yeah, I've heard they do something there. I, do they do something for New Year's Eve? I kind of forget. You're still saying the same thing. Do you have anything new to say? Uh, yeah, you're still saying the same thing. Doesn't seem like there's much in the way of new dialogue here at this point. So... Oh, Fuka's there now. Thankfully, we can still go to Tartarus. In fact, this is a little bit more convenient because she's closer to the save point. So, I'm gonna obviously save now, and then we will be actually heading into Tartarus. So, yeah, I'll talk more about how we'll be handling that next time. Okay, so turns out there's actually a walk with Fuka tonight, 
what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show it for the recording, and then I'm going to reload my save and go to Tartarus tonight, because I don't think this actually means anything in the long run. I'm just going to do this just to show what it is. As long as I've actually shown the dialogue, it's pretty much the same anyway, so... They've already maxed her social link, so this pretty much proves that these don't really mean much when it comes to social link points. Oh, I get why we're getting all of these walk events now. I wonder if these only happen if you've maxed their links. Well, I mean, Mitsuru's, we obviously haven't maxed hers. Unless the dialogue is slightly different if you haven't maxed the link. So, yeah, that's that walk event. Mainly just there to remind you that, obviously, something's gonna happen on New Year's Eve. But, yeah, I'll be ending this video now. Next time, we actually will be retroactively erasing this event from existence and going to Tartarus.